Hi, I'm Joseph Patrick Daniels, and today I'm going to show you some proper pencil holding positions. If you found this video on YouTube, this exercise is part of a larger course I teach on traditional drawing that I've created for beginners, how to draw from beginner to master. It's available online on demand, so if you'd like to watch a preview of the course, just click the link below and it will take you to my site. One of the fastest ways to improve your drawing skills is to make sure you're holding your pencil correctly. Because when it comes to drawing, good fundamentals ultimately are master techniques. In other words, if you aren't holding your pencil correctly, or the motion of your pencil stroke is coming from the wrong place, you'll never be able to create masterful drawings. For the beginners in the audience, this lesson is focused on showing you the four most commonly used pencil holding positions. For those of you who have already had some training as a draftsman, this lesson will make sure you don't have any bad habits, and old habits can be hard to break, so this may take some time for you. Which is why, in this case, if you're a beginner, this lesson may actually prove easier for you to learn. But regardless of your skill level or habits, there's no need to worry, because I'm going to be reinforcing this lesson throughout the course. I'll remind you when to use the various pencil grips for their specific purposes every chance I get, so you don't have to memorize anything or get this perfect today. This is just an introductory lesson explaining the various pencil grips and their uses. And attached to this lecture, you should find the course glossary to download and keep. There you'll find an illustration of each grip along with its uses and strengths for you to reference anytime. Okay, let's get started. There are four standard pencil holding positions generally used when doing a charcoal drawing. These aren't the only ways to grip a pencil, but they are the most common and the grips I'll be using during the course. The first and most common grip is the tripod grip, which looks like this. The tripod grip is recommended for working in detail and on smaller size drawings because it improves the control you have over the pencil's tip. The downside to this hand position is that you have a limited stroke length, which makes it bad for gesture drawing, expression, and shading in larger areas. One of the most common mistakes learners who are new to charcoal drawing make is to rely on this hand position ubiquitously because it leaves their drawings looking stagnant. The fingers controlling the pencil are the forefinger, the thumb, and the second or middle finger. The only part of the pencil that should be used with this grip is the tip or point. In this position, the grip is braced and tends to be tight. The pencil should be held at about a 45 degree angle, but can be much more vertical. It often involves both pushing and pulling strokes, which makes it great for some shading techniques like hatching. Anytime I want to have maximum control over my pencil liner stroke, I would use the tripod grip. When drawing with the tripod grip, the side of your palm should be resting on the paper, and the motion can come from anywhere, including some minor motion from your wrist while drawing, to your elbow and shoulder while hatching or shading. I suggest you take a moment to pause the video and practice this grip a little by making a few marks on a sheet of paper. Again, I'm going to give you infinite demonstrations of this throughout the course and explain how to do the various blending techniques in great detail as well, so you don't need to perfect it yet. This is just an introduction to the grip. One important use for this grip is that it's good for drawing straight lines. You may be surprised to find out that many people actually don't know how to draw a straight line. The trick is to always pull toward yourself, locking your wrist so that the pulling motion comes from your elbow. Try to draw the line with one fluid motion rather than using short strokes. Those short strokes are called search lines and we want to try not to use them. The next grip we'll be using is called the extended tripod grip. The extended tripod grip is recommended for making a much wider range of marks and longer, looser strokes. It's often used while standing up and on larger drawings. It's ideal for drawing at a wider range while maintaining control over your line. The main difference between the tripod grip and the extended tripod grip is that your pencil is held further back, and the heel of the hand is near but does not touch the paper. 
which limits wrist movement. As the space grows between the paper and the heel of the hand, the wrist, elbow, and shoulder are added to your movement. Your pinky finger touches the paper like an anchor when additional control and or balance is needed using this grip. The fingers that control the pencil are the thumb, forefinger, and second finger. And again, your grip is placed further up the shaft of your pencil. This grip is often used while working standing up to get longer, more gestural strokes. It's good for drawing more quickly and when you're doing looser hatching and shading. But it can also be used when you're making smaller, detailed marks to maintain control of the pencil. The next grip I'm going to talk about is called the overhand grip. The overhand grip is recommended for filling in large areas with shading, drawing standing up, free-flowing lines and gestured marks, and working in large areas. This view is from underneath. I'm going to give you two different perspectives for this grip so that you can see the finger positions from a bottom and top view. And this is what it would look like from the top. The correct way to draw and shade with this grip is to hold the palm of your hand down, so this is what it would look like in use. The trick to doing this grip properly is to start by holding the pencil between your forefinger and thumb, then wrap the rest of your fingers around it. Next, flip your palm so that it's facing down. I've often noticed that those working with charcoal or pastel don't truly get the point or see the true potential of this media until they start to explore this grip. When using the overhand grip, it's common to use the side of the pencil's tip so that you can apply charcoal to broader areas. And since it's often used for shading, one of the most useful purposes for this grip is best combined with the blending tools. Here's an example of it being used in tandem with a blending stick to remove the charcoal texture and create a loose blend. As we progress with the course, I think you're all going to find that working with charcoal feels like it lands somewhere between working with lead pencils and painting, because manipulating chalk dust can feel very similar to manipulating paint. It's almost a fluid in some cases. The overhand grip is also commonly used with smaller blending tools like the tortillon. But it's not exclusively used for shading. This grip can also be used while standing up to achieve beautiful, expressive, and free-flowing lines and contours. You can use it while drawing at a table or standing at an easel, but I'm rarely sitting down when using it. It requires the motion of your entire arm. In fact, my arm is commonly extended almost completely while using it. The next grip we'll talk about is called the underhand and extended underhand grip. The extended underhand grip is recommended for looser marks, very precise marks, some types of hatching, and looser lines. I will point out this grip during the course when I recommend it. I know it seems a bit clumsy at first, but for those of you who haven't worked with charcoal before, you're going to find pencil grips that you would never have expected to use being almost intuitively more useful than the standard tripod grip you grew up using to write with. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great tips on traditional drawing and painting techniques. And visit my online art school, the Beginner to Master Art Academy, if you'd like to preview the full course, as well as oil and acrylic painting courses for both beginners and experienced artists. Start your journey today.